What's good, everybody? What's good? What's good? It's your boy Doc Holiday, and we are back. We are back. We are back. Another HBC Overdrive live stream. Just letting everybody come in, make their way in. And as you see, look, y'all already know what it is. Um, you see the colors kind of going through right there, but we breaking down them Jags from Baton Rouge, Southern University. Doing a schedule breakdown for for but I just want to make sure that everybody come in, kick your feet up, kick your feet up, wipe your feet, like the stream, share with your people, comment, but most of all, become a subscriber to the Hottest HBCU podcast that's on YouTube right now. Check me out on Saturday nights with She Loves D uh, as we get into Swag Basketball. MEAC basketball, and other topics from the week that I have not covered, um, I did not cover during the week. So, um, I right, here you go. Here you go. The number one fan, the number one Southern fan. One of my, one of my Southern fans that's on the chat, uh, uh, that's on the channel, Adrian Crook. Shout out to you, my bro, my guy. He says the real boot, but we gonna we gonna get it to we gonna get into to, to everything as far as you know what you want to see as far as the, the the schedule and what you think about the schedule, man. What do y'all think about the schedule? Um, it's kind of crazy. I'm doing the show early this afternoon. Uh, I'm off work today. This is my regular off day on Saturday. I mean on Thursdays, but I have a doctor's appointment at three o'clock. So I'm trying to get this done, uh, and that way I can get to my doctor's appointment. Nothing serious, nothing bad. Just, you know what I'm saying, routine checkup, all that, you know, the whole nine. Make sure weight is good, blood pressure good, uh, sleep apnea is decreasing. Um, y'all know y'all know the whole thing. Y'all know the whole thing when you go to the doctor's office. So, but, uh, like I said, this is such a schedule breakdown, and it wouldn't be me. It wouldn't be me if I didn't come with slides. It would. It just not would be me if I didn't come with the slides, y'all. Look. So, as you see, man, look, I I, I done came through. I done, you know what I'm saying? I done came down, I done came through. Um, took me a little bit of time to do this little uh, setup right here, but it's all for, it's for everybody. So like I said, I'm doing new stuff around on the show. So uh, check it out, bear with me. If you're still used to me doing the old stuff, it's cool, but um, we're just going to get into it, man. But so, we're going to break down the 2023 schedule for Southern University. And I want to know what your opinion, y'all opinions are on these games, you know, the games that I'm calling out. And uh, tell me, what is the history between Southern and said opponent? All right. So, as you know, look, man, look, those Jaguars, they coming out of Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? Scotlandville. They ready. They pump. They are primed to try to take the sap, uh, the SWAC West division. Um, <clears throat> and as everybody knows, Southern backdoor themselves into the conference championship by the way of Prairie View losing, Texas Southern losing, Alcorn being out of, uh, being out of the race, and Southern just molds themselves on, you know, along into the championship game. Get into the championship game. Get blown out in the first half. Dooley decides to make that change 
at quarterback, going from Bashan McCray to Bubba McDaniel. And in the second half, the rest was history. Uh, Bubba had over almost 400 yards of total offense by himself in the second half. Um, if I'm going to say it just like this, and y'all already know, you know, Adrian has been a big proponent of Southern football. If Eric Dooley makes this change at quarterback in the first half instead of in on towards halftime in the second quarter, the outcome of this game would have been much different. Would the outcome of this game would have been much different? Don't know if you would have won the game. What I'm saying is the outcome of the game would have been much different. But um, as I say, the game was a blowout in the first half. Second half, McDaniel comes in, puts on the show for the ages, uh, show duly that this is what you've been missing out as uh, you know as a quarterback. And yes, sir, he should have started the game. I I I give you that. He should have he should have started the game. Would they have won? We would not have known. But the outcome of the game would have been much, much better than what said game was. All right. So as always, we're gonna move up, man. We're gonna go into the schedule, into the schedule now. So, starting off with Alabama State, those Hornets. You go to Montgomery, Alabama, I got to check out the history of where y'all, how Alabama State is against y'all. So, this will be, like I said, this is duly second year at Southern. This is the second year at Southern. This is also Eddie Robinson Jr.'s second year at the helm. Uh, Alabama State and get some get some background music in here because it's kind of dead up here. Anyway, as you see, uh. Let me know what what how what does Southern how does Southern go up again? Uh, <laughs> y'all was headed towards another goose egg. So you go into Alabama State, you go on to Baton Rouge. I mean uh, Montgomery, play Alabama State. Don't know what the schedule was. I forgot. I got to check to see. So now what I'm going to do is read off what. Uh, Read off your scores from last season. If you played said school from last season, um, so you did not play Alabama State last season. Hopefully, this will be a great matchup. Now, I would say. Uh, Alabama State is going to come with a tough defense. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about Southern. Southern does have a tough defense also. So this would be a clash of defenses in this game. But um, <clears throat> it all depends on who's the quarterback going to be for Southern and how well, like I said, uh, I'll repeat myself, how well will Demetrius Davis go from year one in assistant to year two? Um, because we don't know the, we, we are in the unknown of who the QB is for Southern. I might give a slight edge. I might give a slight edge to Alabama state, but well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. Don't, don't, don't shoot my head off. I'm going to say this Southern's defense, the front seven causes chaos for Alabama State. I do have I will have Southern winning this game. 
by Lisa Filgo. By Lisa Filgo. And the reason why I say by Phil, by Lisa Filgo is because uh defenses defenses are are going to be hitting each other and hitting each other hard. Uh so now this game I'm going to tell you just like this this game was supposed to be played in Birmingham but the commissioner fumbled the ball and we talked about the Boombox Classic, Jackson State University. Now, this game is going to be played in Baton Rouge. It is considered a non-conference opponent because Jackson State rolls off a Southern schedule for two years. But because we want to keep the competitive rivalry going, we we gonna keep the competitive rivalry going. They are playing this game as the Pete Richardson Classic. This game is gonna be September the ninth. It is going to be at six six o'clock p.m. on the campus of Southern University. Now, of course, we're talking about we're talking about Mumford only seats like twenty eight five. You know, Jack State's going to bring all their people. We're going to bring all our people down there. So they're going to have the rest. And everything else is going to be history. It's going to be history. So now we got to get ourselves up for this game. <laughs> and, 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 and and try to see where, where we gauge the program at. Now, again. Jackson State and Southern are coming in with two brand new quarterbacks. <laughs> All right. So we're coming in with both teams are coming in with question marks at the quarterback spot. I get a slight edge to Jackson because I, I, I mean, me, because I actually know who the quarterbacks are, but. I'm going to go ahead and when I break down the recruit for each school, I'm going to give my assessment as far as QBs, what I see and how they, you know, how they do, especially during the spring game. And we got to keep our eyes out on the spring game. Jackson State won't have too much of a drop off. Of course, we'll, you, people would say, the drop off is came when most of the players went into the transfer portal, but we retained majority of those players, of some of those players that were going into the transfer portal and moving out of the transfer portal to where now Coach TC Taylor has a team to where he can mold his team into his. In, in, into his 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 liking. I got you, Adrian. I got you. Um, but history has shown in, in the past year, Jackson State has beaten Southern the last three. The last three tries, Jackson State has beat Southern. Uh, look at 2021. If it weren't for Shador. With the 50 yard bomb to Malachi Wideman. Uh, the outcome of the game is totally different. That game was close, so that game was 21 to 17. Go into 2022, Boombox Classic in Jackson. Uh, barring the rain delay, the lightning delay, it was a whitewashing. It was a whitewashing, y'all. 35 to 0. Whitewashing. And then going to the SWAC championship game, like I said, Jackson's, like I said, if both teams had distractions, one distraction for Jackson State prime leaving, other distraction for Southern, why not play McDaniel in this game instead of McCray? Why 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 play I take the let me rework word it. 
why take why keep uh McCray in the game to start the game instead of having Bubba McDaniel start the game? Like I said, this would have been a whole different outcome, but but the going into the win, win loss, I think it would not have changed a lot because we out athlete out talented everybody else in, in a swag. So Yeah, I remember that, but we we uh, I don't want to get into that spring game. That spring game was terrible. Uh, that that spring, yeah, season was terrible. But um, <laughs> oh Lord, come on, Aaron. I see. But I say this. This will be a closer game. This will not be a blowout. This will be a closer game. But I have Jackson taking this game uh, by a touchdown. That gives you uh, your record will be one and one. One and one. Luckily, the the first, in fact, the first two games do not count. On your conference record because they are non-conference games. Now, what we'll count on your conference record is the next game coming up, and that's Alabama A and M, y'all. Alabama A and M. We talking about the same Alabama A and M that brought in twenty, almost thirty transfers. Couldn't do anything with it. And couldn't do anything with it. And it was to me the the, the team the season was a bust. So shout out to Jason Brown Senior, man. <laughs> shout out to Pop, uh, Jason Brown's dad. How you doing, sir? How you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel, man. Y'all heard it there first. It came from Papa Brown. All right. Yep. So, like I said, this game, the last time you played was two years ago. So, they come onto the schedule this year. Last time you played them, you beat them by four, 35 to 31. I say QB Carousel Part Two for for Connell Maynard. I get the edge to Southern because Southern's defense front four is going to create and cause havoc. Against the offensive line for AM. I give you that. You start out the season two and one. Now you sit, you have a conference win. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Shots fired. Shots fired. He said, ask how Auburn and Florida feel. Lord Jesus. Lord. A Brown coming in with the smoke. He coming in with the smoke on y'all, man. He coming in with the smoke on y'all. But I got I got Southern coming in, winning the game. Um quite handily. Uh by at least two touchdowns against Alabama and uh, Alabama and them, they'll be going back to the drawing board to see who their quarterback is going to be. So, you start out the season two and one. Adrian, you're going to start out the season two and one. I'm, I'm just getting you, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know. I'm, I'm giving you, a, 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 you know, some good things, some good things, man. 
What's going on, David? What's going on? All right. September the 30th. September the 30th. You go up to Pine Bluff. Uh, you play. You will play a tough Arkansas Pine Bluff team, a Golden Lions team that is coming off a three and eight season. Um, of course, like I said, they fired the head coach midway in the season last year uh, with Doc Gamble. Don Treadwell was the interim coach from then on out. Uh, Pine Bluff goes in and hires. Alonzo Hampton, uh, formerly player of ULM. He knows the area, but it won't be enough to get over the hump. Southern win this game in a blowout fashion. The misery continues for Pine Bluff in Alonzo Hampton's first season as head coach. And suddenly you're going to start out the season three and one. So now we're going to get into. We're going to get into this game that people want to talk about, that people want to hear about. And the game I'm talking about is. Florida a and now I gotta get my I gotta get myself on this one right here. I gotta get myself in right here. Uh, <laughs> man, y'all going at it. Hey, I'm gonna let you know, Papa Brown. Adrian, he not gonna back down for nobody. He not gonna back down for nobody. So that's that's my guy right there. He not gonna back down, but he cool though. All right. Florida and then comes to Baton Rouge. Come out to Baton Rouge. Six o'clock game. Traveling over that hump in the Scotland Ville. Last season. Southern went, went down to Tallahassee. Thought this was going to be a, a better game. Thought this was going to be a great game. But Bam you just had some uh, they just had some more they had more for them. They had more for them. So this year would be a different story. This year would be a different story. They're coming down to they coming to Louisiana, coming to Baton Rouge. Different place, same results. <laughs> Different place, same results. Different place, same results. I have Bam U coming in to Baton Rouge and beating them Jaguars by 14 again. Reason why I say that. FAMU is improved on the offensive line. They have a much better stable of running backs coming in besides the bruisers. They have an upgrade at wide receivers, even though Xavier, uh, Xavier Smith is, is gone. The next man up is going to be John Murray Sharid. David uh, Mingo. Man ago, and then you bring in a freshman in Robert Christian Lockhart the third, who is a speedster, who is pretty much a X Men two point Short on stature, but 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 more with blazing speed. I put it just like that. So I give the edge to fam you. They come into to Baton Rouge and they take over your trap. Now, 
This will give you a three and two record for right now. That game is a conference game. So you are two and one in conference. As so far. And then the next game coming up is against Lincoln University of California. The Oaklanders come to Baton Rouge. They are an upcoming NAIA program that's based off out of Oakland, California. Now, I have <laughs> an issue with this. I would have settled y'all to put Lane College or Virginia Lynchburg or even Flomo or even Shoe. I could, if you really want to go to a D2, I would have put somebody like, um, let's see. Let's see. I would have put somebody like a West Florida on here. I would have put somebody like a, Yeah, I, I would have put Benedict on here. I would have called it if if I'm if I'm Roman Banks, Roman Banks the AD. I would have been calling the AD and uh, the AD for Benedict and Chinnisbury, the head coach for Benedict College, and say, put us on the schedule. Y'all come to Baton Rouge, put us put us on the schedule, and see how we play this game. Now, the reason why I say that is because Chinnisbury is a former uh, office coordinator for Southern University under Dawson Odoms at the time. Benedict was the number one D2 HBCU last season. Uh, they did go undefeated in the SIAC. But the SIAC I would have put them on the schedule instead of Lincoln University. I would have put him on a schedule to make to <laughs> I would have put him on a schedule. I would have put Benedict on a schedule instead of Lincoln University. That would have made more for a great matchup in Test Your Metal. Of course, you're gonna blow this, you're gonna blow this team out. It's it's your homecoming. It's your homecoming. You're gonna blow this team out. We do not care. <laughs> we do not care. You know, this adds on to your record. It's, you'll be four and two in you know overall. Two and one in the swag. <laughs> oh Lord. Smoke for y'all. Oh Lord, Adrian ain't backing down though. He ain't backing down. So of course, like I said, this homecoming, y'all gonna be down there on the yard. Y'all gonna be on the bluff. Have fun. Eat hearty. Drink responsibly. Party hearty. And on to the next game, which is Bethune Cookman. But before Bethune Cookman, I think you have. I don't even have an out day yet. Your out day is in <laughs> September the 23rd. Man. But anyway, going down to Daytona Beach, play Bethune Cookman University. But Thorne Cookman is having so many problems. They did have a good recruiting class. They got their coach in, Coach uh, Raymond Woody. But last time Bethune and Southern played, Southern came to Bethune and won by a measly point, 30 to 29. That was in 2006. They haven't played since 2006. This is the first year that these two teams have will play, have played each other. This is the first year this the two teams will play each other. It's not going to change. Bethune-Cookman is coming in 
of course, two and nine, two and nine record coming into the season. They still have some sort of turmoil going on over at school. I don't see anything changing about this. I don't see anything changing about this. I say, I would say, Southern by twenty eight against Bethune Cook. What y'all 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 trying, Mr. Brown? Y'all is trying, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown is coming with all the smoke, all all the smoke, all the smoke. I ain't talking about Matt Barnes and Stack Jackson. I'm talking about all the smoke. He doesn't. He got his. He got his. Look, he ready. He got extra clips and ready for you. He read it for you. Bethune come in, loses this game by 28 to Southern. Um, your dog while Bethune took me. Uh, we get on to the next. Now, <laughs> all right, next game on the list. Texas Southern University. Wow, well, oh well, oh well. Now, I got a lot to say about this game right here. Last season was the last year of the Arlington Football Showdown um, between Texas Southern and Southern University in Arlington, Texas. Shout out to Arlington, Texas, Agtown, Texas for putting on an amazing uh, classic for three years straight. But Southern laid a fat goose egg. Southern laid a fat goose egg against TSU, against these third war Tigers. Final in that game last year, 24. Texas Southern, 24. Southern, zero. Rajon McCray had over 200, almost uh, had over 260 yards of total offense. But the summary of the game was you threw three interceptions. You threw three interceptions in the first half. You take those three interceptions, TSU capitalized on each turnover. Passing yards, he had uh, 163, 100, uh, 163 in passing yards. He had 95 yards rushing, but he had the three interceptions, bro. He had the three interceptions. After he threw the first pick, TSU uh, marches down the field. 10 plays, 65 yards. Andrew Body throws touchdown. Second interception. Second interception. Texas Southern marches down the field, 10 plays, 65, 75 yards. Ladarius Owens scores from the one-yard line. That's after the second interception. The second interception, okay? The third interception. And they all, and Texas Southern only needed one play. Andrew Body threw a bomb to Derek Morton for 53 yards, and they up by three touchdowns. 
Now, in the second half, it was different. I say this, it was different. Um, being that I was at that game, I was at the game at the time. It was hot as hell out there, y'all. It was hot. It was hot. It was hot. But I will give you this. You held them the three points in the second half. You held them the three points in the second half. That was it. But you couldn't muster up any type of offense to get yourselves into the end zone. Now that's where it comes back, comes in to where that's what we're talking about when it comes to Dooley. That's where it comes to Dooley. That's where it comes to Dooley right here. The adjustments that he made, he didn't make any adjustments in this game. Now, I say this, you're playing, you'll be playing Let me see. This game will be in. Game will be in Baton Rouge, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this game is in Baton Rouge right here. It will be a different outcome now. Adrian, it's going to be a different outcome. Yeah, but, it, but when you played the la last year, you didn't play in BR. I played in Arlington, in Texas, North Texas to be exact. It's a different kind of heat up here than in Baton Rouge. Y'all got humidity, humidity with your heat. We just got dry heat. It's hot. It's hot as hell. It was like almost 100 degrees outside that day. It, it was almost 100 degrees outside that day. Now, like I said, the play calling, Dooley should have put in McDaniel. And he should have seen what would have happened. But it's a different day. New, different day. Different day. Different scenario. I have Southern beating Texas Southern by 10 points in Baton Rouge with the crowd rock in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge. I had them beat. I have you beaten Texas Southern. All right. Let's see. One, two. I have you at six and two right now. Six and two. Four and one in conference play. Next on the list. Alcorn. Go down to the reservation. And history has shown us last season, the game should have been on the other foot. The game should have been on the other foot for Alcorn. Because in the second half, you didn't do anything in the second half for the game. Alcorn completely shut you out in the second half of the game. Now, you won the game 21-17, but you got shut out in the second half. It got too predictable in the second half of this game right here. And it got predictable on both sides for both teams. Dooley try to Dooley try to pass the ball when Alcorn basically clamped down on in the passing game. Dooley 
but Alcorn was so hell bent on Jarvion Howard to get them to the promised land that it backfired on them. It, it, it truly backfired on Alcorn, on Alcorn to get in this game right here. Because the thing about it is, the thing about it was you stack the box. I like I said, I will give Southern this Southern front four play gaps, shut out running lanes. They held Jarvion Howard to seventy nine yards in this game, which he averages over a hundred, I think over one hundred twenty five yards. You held them almost fifty yards under his average. You play again this season in Alcorn. I think this game is going to be televised also. I have to get the, the, the schedules, the, the TV schedules when they come out. And when they do, we'll, we'll, we'll do a, I'll do a show about that also. But I would say Southern would lose this game. Southern would lose this game in Alcorn by a touchdown. It won't be a blowout. It'll be by a touchdown. You can quote me. You can borrow this, Adrian. I don't care. You know how I am. I'm, 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 you know, I could be with the shits, with the smoke. But like I said, Southern would lose this game by a touchdown to, to Alcorn. And if my boy first was on here, he'll tell you to book it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you like it is. It is what it is, all right? On to the next game. Prayer review, prayer review, prayer review. Prayer review comes to Baton Rouge this year. And let's go back to what happened last year. Hold on. Let me let me get this little. Let me let me get this because I need to see what happened last year. <laughs> oh, the game even starts before the game even starts. Before the game even starts. Both teams talking big noise. Big noise. And next thing you know, all hell breaks loose. And this is before kickoff. This is before kickoff. Agent, I got you, bro. This is before kickoff. <laughs> Prayer View ain't forgot about this, yo. Prayer View ain't forgot about this. Prayer 
Prayer View ain't Prayer View ain't forgot about that. They said they want to the smoke. They said they want to the smoke. They want all the smoke. Of course, um, you have the overall wins against them, 51 to 20. Uh, remember, majority of your wins came in from when they were dog, like tra dog trash. But y'all came into Prairie View. Y'all call it Prairie View East, Prairie View West, uh, Baton Rouge West. For y'all, you came in, you beat them up. You you you, you won the fight, and then you beat them up on the field, forty-five to thirteen. Forty-five to thirteen. Now this is a former coach, Eric Dooley, going up against his former defensive coordinator in Bubba Mac <laughs> Bubba McDowell. Who's a damn good? Who's pretty much a damn good coach? Also, I kind of it kind of sucks when he does his uh the uh, conference call. Ah, Avis. What's going on, Avis? You thought he was an offensive guru? He's supposed to be an offensive guru, but you don't know. You don't know. But it can't, they, if it's an offensive guru, he came in to Prairie View, beat him down by 31, 32, and went back to Baton Rouge like nothing happened, even with the fight. But Prairie View had not forgotten about that fight in that ass whooping that they took. Prairie View has not forgotten about that fight and that ass whooping that they took against those Jaguars last season. So, Prairie View comes into Baton Rouge and defeats y'all by three points in Baton Rouge. And Adrian, like I said, you can clip it. It, it sent it to me when the game come around. I got it on wax. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I got it on wax. I got it on wax. I ain't worried about it. But you will lose this game against Prairie View. You will lose this game against Prairie View in Baton Rouge. And last but not least, Got those Jimmy in the Bayou Classic down there in New Orleans. For three, for almost three, two and a half, three quarters, Grambling was kicking y'all ass up and down the field with a freshman QB in Julian Calvez. Maurice Washington. Only played a couple of snaps. He ran the ball four times, got 40 yards off of it. You couldn't you couldn't contain Chance Williams or Floyd Chalk in the running game. But this is what saves y'all. This is what saves you, Caesar. I'm gonna tell you this is what saves you, Caesar. Alves throwing the interception late, uh, early in the fourth quarter. Alves throws interception. Early and late in the fourth quarter. The air goes out of the dome for Grambling. 
Southern capitalizes on these mistakes. And Southern wins the game 34 to 17. You outscored them in the fourth quarter by the, by yourself 20 to 0. But for three quarters, three quarters, they was kicking y'all ass up and down the field. 17 to 14 for three 17 four, 17 and 14 of three quarters. Four quarter, you score 20 straight. Oh, and I forgot about the fumble. The fumble. The fumble. The fumble where you picked it up. It was a scoop and score. In the fourth quarter, like I said, throws an in Calvez throws an interception. You run that, you go down the field, 12 plays, 60 yards. McCray runs it in 22 yards for the touchdown. He fumbles, Calvez fumbles the ball with seven minutes and 42 seconds left in the game. Jordan Carter comes in and scoops it up for 48 yard fumble return. And then with two minutes and 58 seconds left in the game, and there was the nail in the coffin. Calvez throws an interception. Kristen Davis, 42 yard interception return. Those are your three plays. Those are your three scoring plays in the second, in, in the fourth quarter. I take that back. In the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, your three scoring plays. Sean McCray with a 22 yard run, 48 yard fumble return, 42 yard intercession return. After the 22-yard run, after the first interception, and McCray the, and, and Sutton drives down the field and scores 22 yards out, you could tell you could tell that the air from Grambling just went out. Like everybody was like, you know what? F this thing. We out of here. We're going on. We're going to Bourbon Street. We're going on the first quarter. We about to go party. They didn't care after that. <laughs> and guess what? It's going to be a repeat from last season. I see Southern beating Grambling again by 14 or more points in this game. No matter who the QB is, Southern's front seven is going to give Grambling fits especially when it comes to passing situations because Southern is going to pin its ears back on Grambling and force the QB to make a decision that he does not want to make. All right. Now I say this, you got, I'm going to see, I'm going to count off the victories. One. Seven victories or losses. You have three losses in conference play. You have five wins in conference play. But they'll give you at least a second place finish in the Western Division. And unfortunately, he gets to go home and watch the festivities of the SWAG Championship game from the comforts of your own home, from the comforts of your couch. I'm just saying it like it is. But like I said, this is just our early, this is just an early breakdown of the schedule. 
until all recruiting classes have been finalized before the summer until we see what the the, the spring game going to look like until we know who the QB is going to be for Southern or any team. This is just something that we I, I'm just formulating up. But you can go in and take this and 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 clip it and say during the season, say, look, I told you, Doc. I told you they weren't going to beat us. I told you we're not going to lose to them. I told you we're going to dog them out. I it's cool because I like the interaction with my I like the interaction with my people with with, with the fans and it's cool with me. I love I, I I don't run away from nothing. I don't run away from adversity. I don't run away from the smoke. So it's cool with me. Adrian, you got it right here. You got it right here. It's 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 up in the air. Shout out to shout out to, to Papa Brown for coming in. Smoke. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Mr. Wood? With the smoke. Papa Brown came in with that. He came in guns blazing. <laughs> he coming in with the smoke, bruh. He coming in with the smoke. Now, <laughs> he coming in with straight fire. Look, man. Look, look, y'all. <laughs> look, y'all. This is, I think this is about the most entertaining show that I done had since I started doing the schedule breakdowns uh, since last week. But uh, coming up, coming up, um, all right. Music on, but coming up tomorrow, are you always listening? Hey, Miss Brown, we'll come become a member. Become a member, join and become a member for ninety nine a month. Hey, helps out the channel. I don't keep the money; it goes straight back to to the channel. Um, the uh, yep, the I love. So what what I've been doing for all these schedule breakdowns, so when you see how the screen is and my name and all this stuff like that, the ticker at the bottom, um the color, the color scheme is going by what team I'm 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 actually doing the breakdown on. And so I just do the color for I will actually do the color for that particular breakdown. So that's kind of what I was doing um on Saturdays, on any other time. I'll go back to my original colorway. Uh, like I said, I got some new, I got some new stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, not, I don't know about a new logo, but I do have uh, some new theme music coming down the pipeline. Shout out to my brother uh, JJ out there in California. He uh, doing it up for me. Uh, also, um, try to get some more interviews. To come on here, hey, Mister Brown, if you don't mind. Uh, you can hit me up on uh, hbcuoverdrive at gmail.com and I want to see if I could get an interview with, with, with your son. I want to interview Jason Brown Jr. Um, if that's okay, just let me know if you can, if you can pull it off, ask him uh, and I'll and I reach out to him also. All right now, all right now, <laughs> we got you, we got you, we got you. Um, so it's gonna be doing some more interviews. I'm trying to do some more interviews with Jack State players, with just anybody, with just anybody that's within Black college sports. Period. Yeah, get them to contact me. Tell them I'm also on uh, I'm also on Twitter too. So that's my Twitter handle right there on the bottom. But uh, tomorrow, I don't know if I'll do a show tomorrow, but um, but if I do, it'll be short and sweet. Um, if I don't do a show, like I said, uh, I'll be back on late Saturday night. 
doing a show with uh she loves D and we go, you know, it's Saturday Saturday Night Live. You, you know how we do, we get live with it. Um but um like I said, tomorrow is my my youngest daughter, my broke best friend Peyton. It's her birthday tomorrow. She's turning eight uh tomorrow. So and then Saturday I have a birthday party to attend and to host and to have fun and go swimming in um for my baby girl. So I'm gonna be in full daddy mode this weekend. So uh oh. I'm gonna let Mr. Campbell know too when I come back if I come back on Saturday. If I come back tomorrow, if I come back on Saturday, I let them know. I let them know. I let them know that you y'all beating them too. All right. But uh <laughs> but as always, man, look, uh So, as always, as you see, like I said, I'm crowdfunding for uh, Bethune Cookman Athletics, primarily a football team. Uh, even though I am a, a, a Jack State alum, the I love, uh, I have much love for all HBCUs out there. So, this is going, you know, we're doing a fundraiser for the football team. I am going to move the total to March. Uh, like I said, we'll try to get $2,000. I'll try to get two thousand dollars by the end of this month, but I want we'll move it to March. So I want by the end of March, want to get two thousand dollars, uh, donate two thousand dollars to to Boone Cookman Athletics, primarily football, because I want to help out the kids. And that does not mean that I won't help out my own alma mater, Jackson State, because I will do that also. Um, I will do that also. I will I will do a fundraiser for that also. But this is all going towards the football team, football program. And like I said, if you want to be um, the cash app handle is cash app handle is down below. That way, people can see it. But there's the, the the cash app handle below. Uh, like I said, it's all for the kids. So make sure that the kids get what they need and and to be you know to be charitable. So that's that's the thing that I want to do. But. Other than that, man, other than that, we are going to be out. We're going to be out right now. Um, just look out for me online on YouTube to make sure that I have another show out there. Uh, you'll check know when I have another show coming out. But as always, man. I appreciate y'all for giving me giving me y'all time this afternoon. Um, again, um, much love to everybody. Make sure uh, that you like this, like the stream, comment on it, share it. Most of all, subscribe. This has been another HBCU Overdrive live stream where all HBCUs matter. I'm your boy. I'm your guy. I'm your bro. Doc Holiday, and as always, y'all be blessed, y'all stay safe, most of all, y'all stay dangerous. Peace.